Welcome to Of The Press, the newspaper review session where we take a look at our national dailies. We dissect it, we try to make sense of it as much as we can, as much as time we allow. And of course, we always encourage you to get for yourself uh, the papers to understand what we're discussing. With me to do so this morning in the studio is our senior editor, Kai Delada Inde. Good to have you. Good to be here. All right, let's hit the, round, uh, the ground running, as they say, this raining morning. We have a couple of papers to review for you, but we will begin with the Punch newspaper. It would be displayed. And the Punch newspaper says, uh, the Punch newspaper has got plenty of stories there, as I can see. Fuel consumption, smuggling got 54 million liters per day. That's according to NNPC. That story is on page 22 of the Punch newspaper. Federal government unveils fresh plans on concession of 10 highways, also on page 22 of the Punch newspaper. Atiku is ill-informed. A federal government fault ex-vice president on debt profile on page 9 of the Punch newspaper. Balarabe kidnapped Kingpin Wadume are close friends, according to ex-DCO. Interesting turnout there on page 10 of the Punch newspaper. The big story, as you can see, Obaseki Tambwal seconders meet perfect defection plan on page 2. And confusion in APC as two acting national chairmen emerge. Party may expel uh, Gaydom for declaring self chair. Uh, uh, then party for declaring self chair to replace Oshomole. Ajimobi sues for peace, says National Executive Council will meet soon. And again, we have picture story yet again. Two children die as Lagos building collapses during downpour. So sad. That story is on page four. You can see the picture stories as displayed there. Now, $6.3 million of fraud. Six Nigerians placed on FBI most wanted list. Yet again, we have such stories making the headlines. Politicians uh, feel not violence, restructuring campaign as selfish, according to an Anglican primate there in the newspaper. Inflation climbed higher in May, and it hits 12.40% uh, on page 21. NNPC continues oil search in Niger, Kwara, and Kogi. We see how far that goes. And lightning kills three Federal Road Safety Corps officials in Ogun State. Wow. Ogun Commissioner and workers in self-isolation after driver tested positive for COVID-19. These are more you will find out inside the paper. But let Kaede and I try to make sense of all of this conversation. Kaede, which one is catching your attention? <laughs> I know almost that you're going to the political matters. So let's begin. So you've already preempted my response. But <laughs> because, basically... Because I, I know, Kaede. I, 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 I as much... I, okay, let me, let me try and... Um, let me try and disappoint you. Okay. You know, the well, one that actually got my attention more is that of the building collapse. Yes, the fact uh, that um, uh, it appears nobody is learning any lesson. It appears mm -hmm. um, we've had too, uh, too much of lip services, mm -hmm. either from the government and the people involved. Mm -hmm. We've had issues that um, quite a lot of people would say, oh, government is being too drastic mm -hmm. if they do the right thing. But... I know people will say that, what about the process of approval? Didn't yes. you go through all these processes? But beyond that, I think whatever mistake has been done, whatever shenanigans have been perpetuated at the level of different uh, parastators, mm. the right thing should start to be done. Right. I see that report on our station every time, mm -hmm. and I see that uh, this report, if we show it 10 times, 20 times, it will not be too much, mm. because it appears somebody somewhere has forgotten that lives were wasted unnecessarily. Right. You know, uh, and to capture it more painfully, is to mention that children died. These were helpless people. Sure. These were people who probably don't know the necessary precautions that should be taken mm -hmm. when we have issues like this. And, and it's so sad that we're still talking about that. And we have a whole lot of dead traps in that part of the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of the state, Obviously. and even in different parts of the state. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing? What should we do? It's, it's what really disturbs me this mm -hmm. morning. Right. Uh, as much as uh, we talk about the politics, mm -hmm. but I think uh, 
these are unnecessary waste of life. Right. Just to add to that, uh, you made reference to the report which we did in, uh, in the station by our very own Irene Ubani. You know, it's, it, it's a follow-up uh, to the events that happened. The building collapsed in Itafaji. It shook the country. It got global at, uh, international attention and all of that. And we thought we would have learned lessons. And like you rightly pointed, unfortunately, it looks like we are not learning the lessons. You mentioned children. Again, in that report, Irene revealed that in in, in Lagos State, for instance, in Nigeria, for instance, in 2019, we had like over 19 building collapse uh, yes, each cases. And Lagos holds the highest number, followed uh, by my state, unfortunately, Anambra State. So this is always happening. Why are we not doing the right thing? You mentioned the vulnerable ones, you know, even like the, the news now that we had two children. Um, have been killed in that. If we recall the Itafaji, and if we again look at that report that Irene did, you know, even the children noticed that the building is going to collapse. One of the children said was in that, beaten? yes, it was beaten. He said, I told my auntie that the, the, this building is about to collapse, and then it was beaten. It's, it's, it's a case of, oh, keep quiet. Maybe you're uh, exactly. So, so the, the question is, uh, was the integrity test con? Conducted, conducted and this is what we see when these issues happen that's mm -hmm. when they will start doing it why don't we do it during the process why don't we follow the stage through mm -hmm. some of these buildings that are done within one week some of these buildings that are completed within one month yeah. these are things that we need to check mm -hmm. so while you're trying to manage cost look at the larger picture look mm -hmm. at the you know the negative impact it will have so I, I think it's quite disturbing. So um, maybe it's an issue we need to revisit. Yeah, maybe we need to do an update on that yeah. to really address this issue. Mm -hmm. Probably we shouldn't stop talking. We shouldn't stop the advocacy against this kind of substandard buildings mm -hmm. because there are quite a lot of them. There are quite a lot of them. Maybe government needs to do something fast. But talking about the APC mm -hmm. <laughs> drama, yeah. it's, it's quite dramatic. Three men and, um, emerge. And in one day. Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, but I think the party has come out to explain what truly happened. That okay. it's not really about three, but mm -hmm. it's about two. Okay. And what happens to the two? And how did it become two? This is a case of um, their constitution that Ajimobi was supposed to take over following mm -hmm. the suspension or the, 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 the affirmation of the suspension mm -hmm. of the sure. national chairman. Then Ajimobi was now appointed. Mm -hmm. But because of his ill health, because of the fact that even some of the releases you've seen, you've noticed that it was through his media aid, mm -hmm. which means that maybe not the world incapacitated. Mm -hmm. I think ABC tried to be smart mm -hmm. by quickly you know, transferring the power to the next in line. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, uh, is it eternal? Yeah, uh, Hilliard. So Hilliard had to take over. So there's no conflict between Hilliard and Ajimobi. Okay. So, but there is a conflict between Ajimobi, Hilliard, mm -hmm. and Gedom. that of Gedom. Yeah. So Gedom is saying that, um, you remember that Gedom had already been claiming to be chairman yeah. even when Oshomole, <laughs> before he started having this issue. So that's to let us know that there is a crack in the wall mm -hmm. And if you look at the voting, which uh, a Nation newspaper, when, when we get there, yeah. actually review. Nation did mention that a good number of people was OK with the screening, I mean, process. The, 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 uh, process in a toasty, while the few of them who are, I mean, maybe Gedom and two other persons were against the Edo, uh, palm, I mean, the screening process that he had to even cancel it. Then you now wonder. On what authority are you cancelling? Who are the people behind you for you mm -hmm. to cancel? So, uh, but beyond Gaydom, I think there must be some voices. There must be some powerful elements, right. you know, pushing Gaydom to mm -hmm. probably put this party in disrepute. Right. So we hope that. Uh they will clean their house. It, it will be good that they clean their house so we're not seeing all of this. All right. But for the opposition, it won't be good, you know. Right. They want them to have more crisis so, the better so that for they them. can leverage, leverage on it. All right, politics. All right, uh, quickly, let's look at this. Uh, lightning kills three FRC officials in Ogun. What's going on? What sort of, what's, what's, what's happening? It looks mysterious, it, right? It looks mysterious to me, but, you know, uh, we will not... Uh, Christianize or spiritualize it, but that's unfortunate uh, to hear also. But it looks like in the interest of time, I can hear that we have to move to the nation newspaper. I'm sure that most of the stories will be the same uh, uh, as uh, the Punch newspaper. Before it, oh, it's already displayed. 
Uh, thank you so very much. APC OK's Ajimobi as chair and Sachs Gaidam from uh, the National Working Committee. Adamant doctors kick, kick against intimidation on page seven. Edo Ondo, no deadline extension, says INEC. Now, killings. JNI calls for action, not warning. Uh, Man City thrash Arsenal, something on sports there as Premier League returns. Uh, there you find our story inside the nation newspaper. Uh, six, um, just before you scroll up, six Nigerians, I, I think, have been indicted and put on FBI list in the U.S. for fraudulent activities. That's not so good a story, Kaide. You believe you agree with me? Not too um, good. Yeah, before we come to that, let's just finish taking the headline. Naira falls as federal government plans unified exchange rate. Inflation now at 12.4%, says NBS, uh, on page 27 of the nation newspaper. And then we have the global figures, again, of COVID-19. We are now at 8.3 million globally, uh, 450,000 deaths and recoveries at 4.3. The good news is that the recoveries are way higher than the debt. And in Nigeria, well, we are at 17,735. And the debt is just um, over 400. And then we have um, recoveries that is up to, up to 5,000 plus there. We have active cases uh, that is 11,000 plus. Well, that's the news for you. Now, Kaidi, let's uh, talk again. Uh, uh, le le let me start from the last one. Okay. Looking at the figure, uh, I think we should be a bit worried. The fact COVID that, uh, yes, okay. look, uh, uh, for the fact that uh, we have uh, about 50% recovery rate globally. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting that to translate to our, our, uh, own, figures. our own figures, where we have up to 50%. But what we have is, 4,000 out of 17,000 is not up to 50%. Mm -hmm. So it tells us that we need to do more in terms of recovery rates. In our bulletin earlier on, we saw how Adamawa as you know, yeah. have a no case as yeah. to speak. Well, even no, though they have 19 uh, samples uh, yet, to, yet be tested. to be tested. So mm -hmm. that's to let us know that uh, we need to do more on recovery. We need to do more on um, how prompt people report these cases because mm -hmm. some allow it to get so severe before they report it to the relevant authorities. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't blame people who also have these suspicions and they want to go for the test. The protocols, the stress sometimes they go through can be quite uh, 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 funny. Yeah. And to now have another strategy that is being adopted where some people will be treated at home also causes some kind of setback, mm -hmm. because if I'm going to be treated at home, all the necessary protocols may not be fully adhered to. That's right. But we know the challenge of government. The challenge government is having is the fact that probably the issue of bed spaces, mm -hmm. they may not want to own up, mm -hmm. and they say it's only the severe cases they that want to put in the isolation now. centers. But beyond that, we need to be more proactive. It's not too much mm -hmm. to spend so much on our health facilities to ensure that there is enough testing, the people are attended to, the tests come out on time. Because mm -hmm. if somebody has carried out a test and he doesn't get the result on time, because we had cases where somebody doesn't get the result up to four weeks. Mm -hmm. So that kind of a person will give up and just forget exactly, about it. Exactly. He may even if, if, since he doesn't know his status, he may be quite careless mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, he may have been spreading this thing because he doesn't even know his status. Right. So I'm just saying that uh, we need to check our recovery rate. We need to check our response mechanism. Mm -hmm. Let's not just say Lagos is doing well or Lagos is not doing well. And even some of these bizarre cases also happen in Lagos. True. So it's a matter of our response mm -hmm. uh, 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 approach mm -hmm. to these issues. That we can get to 50, we can get to 60, and why not 80%? We've right. had, is it Singapore or one of these Asian countries where they have almost 80 to 90%? And you also saw that of uh, Madagascar. That's so right. we need to be more proactive so that we will truly say mm -hmm. that this is not a death sentence. Mm -hmm. This is not even a deadly disease. Mm -hmm. It's just a disease, and if you detect it on time, we will be, be able to nip it in the board. Mm -hmm. We know the advantage we have. Our demography is more of the youth population, and by that, we should be able, you know, we should be able to have more recovery uh, figures than that 
of the other parts mm -hmm. of the world. Mm. I mean, just still the conversation on uh, COVID-19, I also would think uh, that we need a change of attitude, Kaede. There are people still in Lagos, which unfortunately is the epicenter, who do not agree at all that COVID-19 is real. I mean, it was on Monday, I believe, or Tuesday, that we, we had a, um, an analyst, Golan Oloje, who said, you know, he's been having a conversation with uh, someone in the isolation center. And this person says, well, I am in the isolation center, but I don't even believe that COVID-19 is real. How bizarre and how weird. So it tells you something about our attitude and behavior towards this whole COVID-19 thing? Is it that um, we don't understand? Is it that, well, government did not manage information well? Is it that we are worried about the level of secrecy and you know, no transparency, so to speak? And we have to change. There must be a change in attitude for us to achieve all of these uh, things that you have mentioned. All right. Um, let me quickly take a point there that I see. Obaze steps down. PDP meets today on Obaseki. Again, the conversation is still continuing. Let's look at, take a look at other stories. I don't know which other story is catching your attention on the Nation newspaper, but in the interest of time. Uh, um, uh, maybe for the sake of um, fairness, since mm -hmm. we've been talking about APC, what about PDP? Right. You know, I, I think the, uh, there's a fundamental issue that is actually worrying. And that's the fact that we have a governor who does not have a party. Hmm. It's, a, that's how it's, it, called, it's called party politics. Oh, that's you are good. supposed you to You have become, clearly put it in perspective. Exactly. You need be, to belong to, to a, party. a party. You understand? It's a constitutional issue. And it's something that the governor needs to address. Hmm. While you are negotiating, it shouldn't be at the expense of the provision of the law. So... He's meeting with the governors, so they are waiting for him, and probably we should put it on record. Where the issue is, mm -hmm. is the choice of his running mate. Now, his running mate in APC, that's Shaibo, mm -hmm. the current deputy governor, has also resigned from APC. He resigned with the fact that where you go, I go. Mm -hmm. Now, the party is saying you cannot just use our platform and take the two slots. Wow. You know, the danger in this is that if you're saying that um, let's have two of you as governor and deputy, deputy. governor, why PDP members or the, the aspirants, three of them, mm. should just become commissioners or they should be something else. else. The fear is commissioners can be fired because they are appointed. That's right. But as a deputy governor, you are elected. It's a joint mandate. It's both of you that will emerge mm -hmm. if eventually they really? emerge. Right. So PDP is saying, do not be clever by half. We have to give you the running mate. <laughs> do not be clever by half. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? <laughs> we have to give you the running mate. Mm -hmm. It's a joint ticket. So we need to be stakeholder Come in this me. whole thing. Mm. So that's where the crisis is. But I think Obaseki should have calculated this before he announces his resignation. Right. But let's leave it for them. Mm -hmm. They know how to manage the he issues. He understands the implications. And the thing is even deeper than we think. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a part of uh, NWC that is saying, we have not received your resignation letter. You only so announced your resignation now you We've not in seen front it in of paper. camera. So which party does Obaseki belong? Good question. Maybe which, you can answer it. <laughs> which party? All right, let's take a look at the Guardian newspaper now, um, while Coyote uh, says he should ponder on that question. Now, the Guardian newspaper says, confusion as APC gets four chairmen in one day. Well, we have a bit of clarification now into that, thanks to our senior editor who's analyzing and uh, dissecting the papers with me here this morning. Now, Eta Gaydom, Battle of Wits. Lawyers there, National Working Committee on Ajimobi. No extension of deadlines on Edo uh, Gobba polls, INEC vows. And um, if you take that a little bit, I think there's something on federal government OK's 27 billion Naira bailout uh, for local airlines sector. Um, the World Health Organization endorses dexamethasone for treating chronic COVID-19 cases. That's a bit of good news. Even, isn't very, it? very good news. Even though dexa, um, dexamethasone know, has been there, exactly. right? But um, From the 60s, mm -hmm. and to now realize that WHO has given it a thought. Mm -hmm. Because when UK announced that good news, 
They were still very quiet. The SCDC is also, you know, saying that mm. uh, it's not yet Hold approved. On, but check. now that WHO has confirmed, mm. though they said severe cases, whether yes. severe or uh, no not severe, it's COVID this is good news. Yeah, and we need to leverage on that. If mm. we reduce the death rate, it will, we are getting closer mm -hmm. to having the vaccine. I, I am hopeful that we'll get to the point where uh, we'll have a vaccine, a known vaccine for COVID-19. All right, still on the Garden, Garden newspaper, Sultan indicts federal government for pervasive insecurity, urges immediate action. That story is on page two. I believe, of the Guardian newspaper. Senate plays NMPC over outrageous uh, subsidy expenditure, also in the Guardian newspaper. And Enugu confirms 19 new COVID-19 cases, shuts hospital over rising workers' infection. That's not good news at all. And of course, the figures, the COVID figures, they're displayed for you. Kaede, we are almost running out of time. So which one should we just take a look at very quickly? And wrap yeah, it up? like you said, it's quite disturbing. Let's mm. just hope that uh, maybe tomorrow, day after tomorrow, mm. we'll have some good stories on the front pages. Like right. this the exam meter. So mm -hmm. it's something that I want to be seeing more. Right. Let's hear those breakthroughs. Let's hear those lovely stories mm -hmm. that, you know, that will give people smile. But mm -hmm. don't let us also you know, analyze all the old stories so mm -hmm. that people can still buy those newspapers. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. you know, some may have developed an attitude that let me just tune in Kaze, and get all the... Yes. You are rooting for the Prince people. They no, must no, they be proud of buy, you. They should buy. Yes, we agree. They we'll do buy. our bit and then we encourage viewers to get the papers and read in details. Kaide Lade, in the senior editor, thank you so very much for being with me this morning. And um, Thank you. Right, that's how we call it a wrap on Off the Press. Remember, it's always 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa. That's every day, uh, not every day, Monday to Friday is the time. I am Amaka Okoye saying have a great day still ahead of you.